Tim, welcome to Watch One. Thanks for logging on. Today we are looking at the Calibre de Cartier Diver, 42 millimeters in stainless steel. If you like this Calibre de Cartier, you can see it and you can buy it on our website, watchyouwant.com. If you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Watch You Want Inc. Now you can see on my wrist, six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference. This one has a nice modern size and stance, but it has aesthetic refinement and ergonomic excellence that make it a great all around watch dress or or play, as they say. The bottom line is only 11 millimeters thick. This one's a full two millimeters thinner than most of the super case, Rolex, you know, professional or oyster cased watches, the likes of your GMT Master II, your Submariner, certainly any sea dweller. This one will fit under a dress cuff because it has a minimal cantilever to the bezel itself and with a low stance on the wrist, there's really no problem wearing this under a sleeve, not just over a dive suit. Moreover, it has the richness of something like a Blancpain 50 Fathoms, a real Cadillac style dive watch, but unlike the 45 millimeter 50 Fathoms, the 42 of the Calibre wears nice and compact on a smaller wrist. I'll even say that it wears more compact than its 42 suggests. And here's the key, a cambered case that really wears more like an ergonomically sound tonneau case in as much as it curves and thrusts downward. Nice short downward thrusting lugs only 46 millimeters from the extremity to extremity so again about two millimeters shorter laterally than even the smallest of your rolex dive watches the super case submariner the watch also features a nice flexible strap so even though it conforms to the flank of the case that is it has a curvature that matches the curve of the case so there's no gap between the two. It doesn't result in the kind of virtual diameter or flare that you get on most watches that use these conforming pieces. And you can see that both sides of the strap will actually bend down with ease to arc around a smaller wrist. So you have smart lug design and a flexible strap interface that's aesthetically excellent but ergonomically superior. Likewise, you can see the screws that fix the strap in on both sides, that's the superior way of retaining a strap. More secure, more expensive to manufacture, and the bottom line is the screws with high polished heads here look the business. No spring bars for the Cartier Diver. Wonderfully done. The strap is of excellent quality, very supple, surprisingly thick. It has a burly feel to it. It almost feels like something you'd find on an Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore Diver. It's that substantial. And of course, Cartier gives you a degree of adjustability that I appreciate on any dive watch in as much as this is an active lifestyler. Beautifully finished with gorgeous polished bevels on the bottom and interesting faceting and engraving. It gives you the ability to adjust the watch on your wrist for levels of elevated or reduced activity, hot weather, cold weather. And again, the on-the-fly adjustability is something you appreciate on a sports watch, which this definitely is. Now, Cartier decided in the early 2000s that it wanted to go more in-house, more male, and more mechanical with its watch line. Although a major force in wristwatch distribution, that was primarily in the field of women's watches and quartz watches. So they launched a Manhattan program first to integrate all of their watchmaking activities, with the exception of a small operation in Geneva. They pretty much integrated everything into their operations at La Chaux de Fonds, and in the process have brought everything from case manufacture to dial manufacture to movement design and manufacture in-house. And as of 2014, the Calibre de Cartier Diver was the result. Now the Calibre de Cartier, the MC1904, actually debuted in 2010 in the watch of the same name, but I feel that this is the definitive version. The original Calibre de Cartier was nice, but it didn't stand out. It didn't have perhaps the richness and the nuance that you expect of Cartier. With the Diver, I feel like this watch has really come into its own. And a big part of that is the gorgeous dial in contrast with a beautiful DLC-coated black bezel. Again, I'm sort of getting a 50 Fathoms vibe from this one. Now, all of the signature Cartier styling elements are present. First of all, you have a gorgeous case with a great deal of contrasting nuance. You have these lugs that read almost as stepped lugs. They project outward laterally from the case, and you can see the brushed flanks of the case show that definition to good effect. Beautiful polished bevels on the lugs themselves and a fully polished knurled flanking grip to the bezel itself. 120 clicks, you can move it in half minute or half second increments, I should say. Very impressive, and it does meet the ISO 6425 standards of a true dive watch. 300 meters or 1,000 feet water resistant. 
It's a watch that you can use in a practical sense, take in the pool, you can wash the dog while wearing it, you can go jogging. It's up to anything you are, including black tie events, because it would look just as well in a tuxedo. And again, because of the thinness of the case, there's no trouble with the dress cuff. Cartier did a great job of integrating its traditional styling cues in a watch that's anything but traditional. Although, arguably, its first watch ever, the Santos of 1904, was a sports watch, the 110 years intervening between that watch and this watch established Cartier as more of a dress watch, a formal watch manufacturer, and many of those elements accumulated over the years are evident in the dial. You can see the broad sword hands. Although you can't quite see it to good effect on the iPhone, there is a concentric circular guilloche that runs under the stylized Roman numerals of the hour track, and there's even the Cartier secret signature. It's actually built into the Roman numeral 10 right here. You can see it in the kind of spindly cross member of the figure that actually has the Cartier company name built in. It's a gorgeous representative of traditional elements incorporated into sort of an avant-garde treatment, taking something obviously the dress watch motif and incorporating it successfully into a dive watch with a few winks and nods to high style so practical but also very presentable you can see the expanded aperture for the date an element that i like to have on a sports watch as well as beautiful luminescent elements that are practical in every sense loomed uh, triangular index on the bezel unidirectional of course fully loomed roman numerals broad and heavily loomed hands the one, shall we say, whimsical element of the use of luminescence here is the small second subdial at 6 o'clock, which features a huge luminescent track. Aids in visibility during the day, but at night it takes on a character all its own. I'm actually going to kill the lights for a second so you can get a sense of how this watch looks in the dark, because it really is a standout in that respect, and it's part of the, the spectacle of the Cartier Diver. So I kill my first light, and off goes my light box. Okay, there you go. A sight to behold and instantly recognizable even in the dark. The Cartier Diver is a true dive watch in the sense that you will have no trouble reading the time in day, night, or low light conditions. Distinctive and whimsically so, it's practical at the same time. And to me, that is the essence of a great two-way player, a dress or play watch. A watch that has full credentials as a sports watch, but also has the ability to pair up with more formal attire. And with the manufacture movement, a Cartier-built case, a Cartier-built dial, almost everything is constructed in-house. That's the last part of the equation. Cartier's project to really make itself a manufacturer of reference, not just an etablisseur that assembles purchased parts. The manufacturer caliber 1904, so named after the year of the first Cartier watch, is a automatic dual barrel 48 hour power reserve in-house caliber built in Le Chaux de Fond by Cartier, developed by Cartier. Now the key elements here are the bi-directional winding on ceramic rotor bearings, efficient and unlubricated thanks to the ceramics. Bi-directional winding was chosen because a Cartier must be above all refined. Now it is a solid case back, you can see the aesthetic right here, very much tool watch style, but the bottom line is that what sits just beneath is quite impressive. Durable, precise, it features hacking seconds, so when you pull the crown out, and of course it is, a, it is a faceted cabicon in the Grand Cartier tradition, when you pull the crown out, it does have a hacking mechanism, so like a true utility watch, you can synchronize to a dive timer, a mission timer, or just a known accurate quartz clock of some kind. But the bottom line is the capability is there should you need it. Moreover, with twin mainspring barrels, Cartier is seeking to achieve what Rolex achieves with a fast barrel, namely even torque distribution across the full range of the power reserve. It's comparable in power reserve to something like a Rolex 3135, but the contrasting approaches pretty much come down to Cartier's determination to use this movement to drive complications in the future, hence the use of twin mainspring barrels, whereas Rolex, knowing that its caliber is going to be for simple time only or time date, or time GMT watches, goes with the single barrel and fast rotation. Hacking seconds, 27 joules, bi-directional winding so it doesn't have that off-kilter, unweighted wobble that you get in unidirectional winders. It is a very sophisticated, very modern caliber that's up to duty in a sports watch in every respect. And again, because it is a modern automatic, it's basically set it and forget it in a watch that you'll never have to think twice about wearing, whether with a suit or a bathing suit. This is a fantastic modern design triumph from Cartier, 
a house previously known for fine dress watches, increasingly known for practical and fashionable tool watches. You can see this Calibre de Cartier Diver 42mm in stainless steel on our website watchyouwant.com.